Hi everyone, it's Sarah and today I'm going to show you how I made um, my Dandelion Dreams card which has got that lovely shimmer, can you see it in the light, from the new sprays. I love sprays and I love stencils so, um, and I love dandelions. <laughs> so that, that's kind of where I came from with my card. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be using um, Olivia Small, one of the new ones. Um, open dandelions i just love these just gorgeous um tall dandelions sorry i'm having to have a look because i don't know them off by heart and that one this um one comes with open dandelion um i've used the laurel stencil and i'm using the mica spring moss and blue moon and I'll show the other colours as um, as we come along. I'm starting with a square of uh, multifarious card, just because that's that's kind of how I ended up with this one. I love a clean card. I love a um, you know clean and simple. I'm just not very good at keeping my fingers <laughs> clean when I'm doing these um, cards. Um, I also I'm better at making an. Um, I'm not very, I don't feel like I'm very good at making landscape pictures um, and, and the circle format uh, takes that away but you could equally make it as a square it, it it wouldn't matter at all so I'm going to start with a square and then I'll I'll use my die cut to cut out the bit that I want and then add some more flowers around so that's my multifarious card now um, if you are of the cleaning your stencils and having them sparkling at any point when you're uh, after you've used them, um, please make sure you're sitting down now before you see mine because I don't. <laughs> um, I do actually think they look rather pretty like this, um, but especially when I'm using ink, um, the only reason I ever clean my stencils is if they're caked in paint and it's so thick a layer it, you can almost peel it off. Um, one, for me, my crafting time is very short, so I um, <laughs> don't, don't spend a lot of time cleaning. <laughs> and um, two, you, you, you get additional colours in, you get little happy accidents um, when you don't clean your stencil. <laughs> but um, that's just my choice, if you would like to. That won't make any difference to the, to the final piece. Now, what I'm going to do is spray my stencil and use it almost like a stamp really um so i'm going to have to go and spray it off camera though because it took me so long to set up this little setup here to move it around and bring my big box <laughs> to spray it in would just be a bit much so i'm going to um come back with a sprayed stencil well it's a good job i went off camera to do that because my <laughs> spray got clogged so i've had to i've actually had to do some cleaning um which does give me the opportunity to say i do clean my nozzles um and the way i do it is i take them off like this and um throw them in a, a, a tub of water um and then every now and again give it a quick squirt through and at uh, the ink and it's the mica that blocks it the ink and the mica kind of flows out over time um so that's what I've been doing. So I've got a, a bit of an inky um, stencil there. I also just then spritz it with some water, just an ordinary spray bottle. Just move my card out of the way. Just, um, I just like the effect it gives, really. It, it seems to help spread the ink out a bit more somehow. So here's my piece of card. I'm going to flip my stencil over. And what I did was I sprayed bluish at the top and then the green a bit further down to roughly give that same um, kind of um, landscape look really. Just lay a piece of paper over the top there. It's a good rub. Good for you this you know apparently. Feeling texture like that and repetitive movement. Good for your well-being. Let's have a look. And there we go. And look how that copper, can you see how that copper's sitting on there? And then what I'll do there is leave that to dry naturally. Um, 
you could do it with a heat gun uh i i just like the effect when it's it's left to dry and do its own devices to its own devices okay so here's my dried card it doesn't take long but i nipped off and had my tea and watched a bit of wimbledon so i'm not really sure how long it took but um and it depends on the weather obviously depending on where you are um it's a really lovely way of making quick backgrounds so you can um you know do the, do a few in a batch if if you like to um just spray a few up and then you've got them ready to add add some more stamping to it at any point now i'm going to um stamp olivia small olivia um but i'm going to put it on my stamping platform which is just next to me but again if i move this camera uh, I'll, there'll be no getting back to it so i'm just going to bring it over and then um, talk amongst amongst yourselves i actually bought my stamping platform i've got the tim holtz um mini one um for my lavinia stamps because um i used to find it quite tricky sometimes you know when you, you miss a bit and um you just need to uh yes you can color them in but um if you've got a stamping platform you're your, your stamp is in the right place you can just ink it up a bit more and press it down and also um i'm going to put the the card here for you to look at while i'm whittering on um and also when you do things like fairy wings if you want to um put some uh, kind of sparkle on there or some mica um stamping over the top of them again with some more black just really makes them ping as does mermaid tails so for me stamping platform is perfect with um for living these stamps but what i found is that um they generally stamp first time when i'm using this i don't know whether it's just easier or um what but um that's just a single impression and it's it's fine and you can see how different cards I hope you can see from that colour how differently cards come out. They were exactly the same sprays. Um, it's just how it how it happens. Bit of a serendipitous moment. Right, so there we go. Now I'm going to use Elements Bermuda to put a little ground down there for her to stand on. I've got a. <laughs> now you won't be surprised by this. I've got a bit of a mucky <laughs> sponge. It's um, the only colour that's really coming off it now is the Bermuda from when I made the sample. Um, so it's not really mucky. Uh, if you've got a stencil brush, then that will work, obviously. Um, or a makeup brush. Can you see that on camera? This is where I get a bit mucky because I end up getting it on my fingers and then putting it on a card. I'm just going to rip that a bit. No, I'll pop it like that. Just uh, could do with doing a bit longer. So I start at the torn edge and kind of dip down, really. Um, and I try and lighten my touch as I move down the card. I always think it's surprising how much, you know, even on the slightest layer you get, um, it gives quite a bit of coverage, doesn't it? There we go, a little hill for her to stand on. Pop that away. Yeah. And then I am going to stamp my um, open dandelion. And for this, I am going to use a block. Um, oh, I've actually found a fairly clean one. There we go. I tend to use a mixture. When I'm doing little things like this, I'll use a block. Um, ooh, like I said, I always, I always stamp my fairies with my stamping platform. So I do a bit of both. So my stamping platform's always next to me if I need it. I'm going to have this dandelion um, fairly close to her, really. I want her to look like she's smaller than a dandelion. So 
There we go, and I'm stamping with a black Versafine Claire because that's all I really ever use unless Versafine isn't suitable. going to put another one and what I did was I put another one um a bit lower down as if it's at a you know bit of a different perspective as it were just pop that in there there we go and then um Adding the open dandelions, what I really liked about using the open dandelions over the top of the uh, tall dandelion on top of the open dandelion, sorry, is that you don't need to do any masking because these ones, um, you wouldn't, that's what you, that's how you'd see it. So um, it saves on a bit of work and my cards need to be quick because I'm, I'm usually short of time. In fact, this one really has got more to it because I really wanted to do that effect with the um, <clears throat> with the stencil, but I couldn't get it to just be on part of the card. So that's kind of how the design happened. So I'm going to pop a bit of pop a bit of dandelion seed head there, dandelion clock as we call them. Pop one there. They're so pretty. So, so pretty. The detail is incredible. There we go. And um, I'm going to add the other bits um, when, I, um, when I cut it out. Now I'm going to colour in my dandelion flowers. I hope you can see them there. Can you see? So I'm going to colour these in. And what I'm using is some elements. Pop that to one side there. I'm um, on a stamping block or a bit of glass or something. I'm just going to touch it down. It gives you a bit of ink. There's my water spray gone. You won't believe it. It has a hand. Oh, there it is. It has a handle on it, so I can hang it onto my, you know, my little IKEA tray next to me. And um, I still use it. I'm just popping a bit of water on there to spray. I've got a jar of water over here. I'm just wetting my brush. And then I can use my ink. I'm gonna to have to put my, put my glasses on and hope I don't get my head in the in the video. And you will get the um, the the green behind will 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 pick up, but it doesn't really matter. That's one. Dandelion has green bits in, so. And we're in fairyland, anything goes. There's one. There's the other one. And I'm not being particularly um, hugely careful, it really, really, either, because I think the point on my brush is catching those end bits. That's the bit you'll see. And because of the busyness of the background behind, you're not really going to don't really have to be hugely particular. I'm going to add a bit more ink to that um, mat and just come in again with uh, over the top, just checking you can see, over the top of some of those petals just to give it a bit of variety, a bit more texture, a bit of depth of colour. I'm going to do it on this one. Nearly off camera there. There we go. And then the other thing I'll do, a bit more. That's where the juiciness of these ink pads comes into their own is when you can use them to paint them as well. And I'm just going to give a bit of a yellow ink splatter. Just for a bit of variation of colour and really why not? There we go. Clearly the acrylic block by Turning it upside down, put it on the page. Pop it in its pocket. Now, the other reason I have lots of paper underneath is so that I can transfer to a cleaner piece and not get mucky. 
right um i'm going to cut this out now with a circle die um i have a bit of masking tape on mine um position it so that we've got a bit of she's kind of she's not central but she's um so she's a bit off center that makes sense there we go so i'm just going to pop over to the die cutting machine behind me and i'll be back i didn't pop to watch any more wimbledon i did just cut that out straight away and come straight back to you um so like i said you you could um you could do it as a as a square card there's no reason why not um if that's what you prefer but like i said i do like a bit of a circular one and um i also find sometimes that if i do it bigger and then cut it down um i get better effects than if i'd started with a with a white circle but that's just kind of um personal preference really now then <laughs> um oh i've got a text stamp this is believe in the magic um doesn't really matter it's just adding a bit of texture to that background whatever your favorite kind of little bits of um words are and i'm going to use versafine warm breeze quite appropriate really for a dandelion warm breeze <laughs> and all i'm going to do is pick up some blue and then i'm just going to stamp it onto my um paper there just so that because i just want the merest hint of um lettering i don't know whether you can see that um there we go right dab it off again and literally just i'm just it's it's just adding a bit of texture really there we go i've still got my tall dandelion my dandelion clock um on the um on the block so i'm just going to come in and add a couple more and like i say uh it you don't need to mask it because it that that's how it would look if it was over the top of a dandelion uh, so it just saves a bit of time and one there i'm going to put one around the top here just to look just to frame her really and she is and then the open dandelion i hope i've got that right let me look at my notes no it's the tall dandelion good job i checked the tall dandelion comes with some beautiful dandelion leaves you can see i've used them already well i used them on that card <laughs> um they've just got a gorgeous bit of texture so i'm just going to use versafine rainforest that's less applicable to a dandelion um to just add a few leaves as if they were under that plant there so just coming off the edge that's i'm going to use the bigger one here i think and there and then i'm going to pick up the smaller one So they are they're just beautiful. That's our stampy one you can see. They 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 just look like a dandelion leaf. She's so clever, isn't she, Tracy? So talented. Right, there we go. Then I'm gonna come back in with my Bermuda. And my uh, sponge and just give it a bit of an edge so i always tap it off um around the edge because i don't i don't want the full amount of color but depends how juicy and how long you've had your ink pads these ones seem to stay juicy for ages so they're just they're just brilliant ink on there. tap it off over here Hope I'm not making you go dizzy all this spinning around. There we go. And then just to finish her off. Finish her off. I don't mean to finish her off, but complete the um central piece. I picked up some um 
mica minerals and added a bit of um water and used a bit of paint now um it doesn't stay on um you could dust it off if you if you worked at dusting it off but it does enough to um add a bit of mica and a bit of glimmer to her um to her wings now i've used the emerald pearl but you can use whichever one you like um, i've got quite a pointy brush and what i'm doing is filling in the um now what would you call these <laughs> the within the veins should we go for that within the veins of her um her wings and what i found was it almost gave it a bit of texture really it kind of if you use a cheap card this is multifarious um and you put too much water on it um it's a bit of um it's a bit dodgy because with this amount of water the the card can add uh, kind of come up in raised bits but sometimes if you paint between the um paint between the veins on a good card you can feel like it kind of raises although maybe it's just the mica who knows i'll have a proper look that's what it feels like when i'm painting it and then i just used the rest up and gave it a bit of a mica spatter and if i don't like it where it's landed on it once it's dry i can brush it off or um yeah it will brush off really um and if i need to i'll add a bit of black pen oh talking of black pen oh over there i'm just going to add a few little dots around her feet just to ground her a bit more on that um grass just give her a place to be and then i'm going to mount it on a card I need ready-made cards. Butter in my drawer behind me. I'm going to go in here. I think this is 13 by 13. Let me check. Um, 13 and a half square. Let's find a green page. So she's going to go on here and I'll just add her with a glue stick. around so just to whatever glue stick you prefer to use I use scotch right let's move that out of the way so I don't get glue on it We'll pop this in the middle. Another top tip that I found that stops me from smearing inky finger marks all over it is I guess another piece of paper and smooth it over the top. Like that. <laughs> so you can guarantee if I stuck it down, there would be a black mark somewhere that transferred it, and there's still no guarantee that there isn't one. See, there's one there. And that's with me trying to be clean. But that's okay because I'm about to stamp a little dandelion board, which is just lovely. So then pot, pop it on a block. Sorry, slightly off camera there. Get some black ink on there. And I'm just really adding a bit of decoration to this corner. You could put a greeting here if you wanted to. So it's quite sweet to add the. I wanted to put these on there, but they didn't really fit with the design. So, oh, let's pop them in that corner. That's a good place for them. 
So that's little dandelion bud. And then I'm using the little dandelion leaf. And so tr my trick is that if I've got a black marker I didn't want, I'm going to stamp over it and you'll never know it was there. I'll have one down here, just peeping out the bottom. Might put another one there. And you could do the same on the envelope. And then you've got a cording envelope to go with it. So there we go. And I'll try and show you with them. Um, without getting mucky hands. So I'll just give that a bit of a smudge, those big dots. Can you see how easily it, you can still see it's there, but. So there we are, that's my original. And that's the one we've just made just now. So each time you do it, it will look different. Um, this one seems, this one's a bit stronger colors. That's a bit more ethereal, but essentially both done in the same way and they'll come out different each time. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'd love to see um, if you do something similar or if you use different fairies or different flowers. It's always, always fun to see how other people um, interpret a design. Take care.